and welcome home. Thank you. It's great to be back. I mean, like you grew up pretty much just down the street from here. Basically, yeah. This is uh, these are my old stomping grounds. It's really fun to be back and to sort of visit some of your favorite places to see that things are still the same. It's really uh, that's kind of my favorite part about it, you know, because you feel like okay. No Things haven't changed too much, you know. We are here at the Moosehead Saloon, a place you've been to many times. Indeed. What's the best item on the menu here? That's a tough call because everything on this menu is great, but uh, the buffalo chicken salad is my favorite. Ah. It's just, I mean, it's so good. Everything on this menu is amazing. You're home for like, what, 24 hours, not even? Not even 24 hours, but uh, yeah, maybe about that. Yeah, we, we drove overnight, rolled in here at like five in the morning, so we'll be rolling out around the same time tomorrow. Are you excited to be back home and playing in front of a hometown crowd? I'm so excited to be playing in front of a hometown crowd because, I mean, playing around the country is my favorite part of my job. I love touring. I love playing live. But being home and playing in front of family and friends and then people who've been there since day one, there's nothing like that. You have a certain amount of, like, free tickets you can get, give out at every show. It's a little secret for you guys out there. Yeah. When you come to the hometown uh, crowd, when you, when you come to your hometown, do you have to give out that many more? Yeah, it's, that's the hardest part for sure about the hometown show is that we have a certain amount of guest list spots and then my, a lot of my band, you know, some of my band went to high school with me, so they've got family and friends too, so we're all just sort of, you know, trying to figure out how to evenly distribute. It's, it's, it's awful to have to say to your guests, like, okay, well, who's first priority and who's this next? Because it's like, we want everybody to come and, you know, we want all of our families to be able to come for free and all that. So we, we worked it out though. You know, you buy a couple extra tickets, distribute them, and people are just happy to support, which is really cool. And you're like a couple weeks out of the new album dropping. Are you still in like that uh, mode where it's like, oh, it's just like the new baby and I want everyone to see this and to hear this? Absolutely. The new album came out a few weeks ago and it's been such an exciting few weeks. I'm definitely still in that mode because this is the first time that I'm playing these new songs live. So to see this positive reaction from the crowd in every city is so cool. And it's really fun. It still feels cool to sign the new CD at meet and greets and to have all the new merch that goes along with it. So it's fun to bring that to the hometown, you know, since this is where it all started years ago. It must be wild playing the new stuff and seeing the reaction from the crowd that, that they actually know it yeah. and that they're on board with it. That's the coolest part is that this record hasn't been out for three weeks and people are already singing the words, they know the songs, and people have come up to me in the last two days and had tattoos on their feet of the new lyrics. Like, I'm freaking out. I'm just like, this is the cool, like, there's nothing like seeing somebody say, I tattooed something you wrote on my foot. <laughs> Someone has an actual tattoo? Several. Really? Yeah, several fans have, have tattoos of lyrics, of songs, and, and of some of the new ones, too. And I was just in New York, and two of them, my biggest fans, these adorable girls, they had, you know, Gravity Happens tattoos on their feet, and I was wow. just like, I mean, it rocks, that rocks your world, you know? It's like, wow. Are you thinking that this is something you might do then? Tattoo my own stuff on my yeah. feet? I don't think so. If I ever, I don't have any tattoos because I'm one of those people who would, like, want to change what it is every day and wear it, you know, so I don't know. I, but if I ever got one, it wouldn't be of my own lyrics. I don't think it's a little pretentious, maybe. <laughs> I know that you shot the video for Heart and Chains in my hometown, in Toronto. Oh, cool, yeah. Uh, not long ago. Everybody wants to know, when are they going to be able to see that video? Well, I think Canada has an excuse, uh, excuse, exclusive right to it for a couple of weeks, and then hopefully July 1st, I think, is what we're looking at as when we'll be able to use it in the U.S., because Canada was cool enough to get it going, so it's going to be really cool, though. I can't wait for everyone to see so it. So it's going to be on much music in Canada? Yes. And now you're living in L.A. Yeah. Uh, how different, being from Cleveland, how different is living in L.A.? Living in L.A. is about as different as you can get. I mean, I haven't lived anywhere, you know, else in my life, but, you know, on the road. <laughs> so, but it is, uh, it's it's quite an adjustment in, in that people are are, uh, are not as nice on the roads. That was the, the first thing I noticed, is that <laughs> driving in Los Angeles is not like driving in Cleveland. <laughs> but, um, but people in general are fantastic in L.A. You know, you kind of have this preconceived notion when you're from the Midwest, like, oh, L.A., I wonder if everybody's going to be in show business with an agenda, but I've met the coolest people out there and it's it's beautiful and very inspiring to be out, you know, out west with all the topography and the beach and the boardwalk. I mean, it's really cool, although this is, I mean, Cleveland's always, always my home. Yeah, the one thing that LA doesn't have that Cleveland has, I don't see how you could miss it for very long, is winter and uh, snow. Yes. Like, there's several months of it here yeah. and there are cold days like 50. I know. It's 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 pretty ridiculous. I mean, my birthday's in December, so 
I've always been kind of a fan of the winter. I mean, I, I could be done with it after January, like two months in Ohio and then great, you know? But of course it lasts until May sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So Los Angeles, it's, it's been amazing to not have to deal with that, but I kind of do miss it. Like hearing, you know, holiday music when there's palm trees and it's sunny like this outside. I'm kind of like, you know, I, I really look forward to coming home during the holidays because I like, I like a little bit of the winter here. It's just, you gotta have that, you know? This is your, your third album now, and I heard in another interview you described it as uh, having a rootsy feel to yeah. it. What is a rootsy feel? <laughs> That's a good question, because I use that word a lot, and so I always wonder, do people even know what that means? This is a rootsy interview <laughs> right here. It's, it's rootsy. I think that I was using that word because it's kind of, you know, rooted in this heartland feel. You know, it's not country, it's not twangy, and, and the songs aren't about pickup trucks or whatever, but it's like... I grew up listening to Eric Clapton, James Taylor, Carole King, Joni Mitchell, some of these organic kind of folk-leaning artists, um, blues-inspired artists. And so I think that that's what Rootsy means, is that it's sort of, it's sort of got that base to it. So you're, are you hoping that at some point this, this could cross over? and be played on country stations? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I think lately in country music, I've been really fascinated by artists like Zach Brown Band and Miranda Lambert and um, Lady Annabellum, who are not necessarily what you would typically call super country music. You know, it, 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 it's, it's sort of this new wave of country that crosses over. And I definitely would, would love to see some of these songs go in that direction, because I think that that definitely could be a good home for me. With that said, if we go back three albums ago, what advice do you give to the 2007 Kate? Oh gosh, I think about that stuff all the time. I used to write myself notes in high school, like to read a year later, and you know, and then really? sort of yeah, wow. and think like, wow, what advice would I have given to myself when I was writing this note? So it's a great question. I think that my advice to the 2007 Kate and to anybody who was in the position that I was then is just to to have thick skin and to not be so obsessed with pleasing everybody you know I'm, I'm from Ohio and everyone here is so sweet and you know everyone's so helpful and so I had a lot of that in me like wanting everybody to love everything I did to please everyone and you just can't you know no matter what business you're in you got to believe in your craft believe in what you do and if somebody doesn't get it that's cool because you know you you got to just be okay with with doing what you do and being confident with it it must be difficult because everybody around you likes you and likes what you do but then if you do Google yourself or you do read a bad review, how do you put that in the back of your mind and not think about it? It used to drive me nuts. I mean, to the point where I don't I don't go Googling, Kate Vogel sucks, to see what comes up, because that's just asking for it. There'd be too much stuff, right? Uh, probably. I'm just joking. No, people are, people, like the internet especially, gives people such an opportunity to just do whatever they want and say stuff. So people are, people are going to be mean about everyone. There's going to be people yeah. online saying, Christy Brinkley's not pretty. Dude, come on. You know, it's like, so... I Nobody's going to come up to you in person and be like, hey, Kate, your last album really sucked. No, not really. I mean, not that I've had yet, so that's <laughs> that's lucky. But I think that for me, when I do read a bad review or a review that was like, oh, well, this person didn't listen to the album, you know, anymore, you have to just laugh at it and you, you have to make sure that it doesn't affect you because... It, the second you let something like that affect you, that's just what people want. That's you know, and, and I once heard somebody be like, "The more haters that you've got, people hating on you, that probably means you're doing great." You know, so that's what I always tell kids who are like, "Oh, this person's mean, and they're laughing at me for this." I'm like, "Dude, like that means you're probably doing something right." You know. You're on the road a lot, and you've also got you know a real high-profile job. Do you find dating to be difficult? No, you know, I'm really not a. I, I, I don't like date around a ton. I tend to be a pretty like steady relationship type of girl and I think that's just because I'm you know I'm a sensitive person I'm a songwriter I'm so for me I'm not one of those artists who feels like you have to go looking for these dramatic things to write about so you know I'm I'm pretty boring in terms of the dating life I'm definitely not the girl who's touring and sort of looking for like a new dude every night like that's yeah. totally not you know how I am it's fine you with me come with me yep. some, yeah, yeah. looking in the audience yeah exactly no that's that's not my style if that's somebody else's process that's cool but I think that dating is it's all about at the end of the day just hard work it's like if, if you want it then you got to work hard at it because I'm traveling a lot I'm all over the place and you know usually the guys that I'm attracted to are also you know driven people who are who are traveling around everywhere so 
it's like anything, anything worth having, you know, you gotta really work hard. Does, does any guy that date you, any guy that dates you, are they worried that they're gonna turn into like song lyrics <laughs> somewhere down the road? Definitely, you know, guys will ask me periodically, so, you know, are you gonna write? And But I'm open about it. It's like, absolutely. Like, my life is influenced by the people that are around me, both, you know, romantically and, and not so. So I think that, I think that a secure guy, though, understands that if things are good between us, then I'm not going to say anything bad in the songs, you know? Usually the, the songs that are about bad stuff are going to be about somebody else. Yeah. So if you're not a nice guy, then you get a not nice song written about exactly. you. Exactly. It's true. It's true. I mean, sometimes, sometimes it's just the way it happens. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much.